Hi, I'm Patrick. And I'm Liv. And this is the mach -E Vlog. Today we are at the LA Auto Show and we're going to take a look at all the electric vehicles that we can find. So let's go. And to start off, we're going to start with one of the oldest electric vehicles. This is a 1915 Detroit Electric. It had a top speed of 20 miles an hour. It was built from 1906 to 1939. So it's the longest running produced electric car. And we were actually at the Henry Ford Museum in Detroit, and we got to see one from 1914 that is actually the vehicle that Clara Ford drove. Super cool. Very cool. But let's go find some more modern EVs. <laughs> Next up is the Electra Mechanica Solo. This is our quirky little one. It's a three-wheeler, single-seater uh, little EV. I like it. I got to test drive one at Fully Charged Live in San Diego. If I haven't edited the video, just check the description. At some point, I'll put it up there, or we'll link to it above. But I can't wait to see that. This retails for $18,500. It can go about 100 miles and a max speed of 80 miles an hour. I don't think Patrick hit that on his test drive, but I'm Not excited quite. to see what that felt like anyways. It's a really cool offering and it looks pretty snazzy. It's also available in a whole bunch of colors. And uh, there it is wrapped, <laughs> delivering stuffed crust pizza. Yeah, very cool little car for a little solo around the town type of uh, commuter. I think it would be pretty fantastic, but let's move on to some that have maybe four wheels. <laughs> this is the 2023 Lordstown Endurance pickup truck. It's another competitor coming into the soon to be crowded EV truck field. Uh, it's not out yet, but it looks really sharp in person and they just got to get it into production. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll see that next year. And now for one of our favorite EVs from Porsche, the Taycan. And here is a nice, boring Taycan, right? Boring? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't think but, this car is boring in any way ever. Well, it's <laughs> just comparison to this. With a tent on top, the Cross Turismo version. I just love it. It's absolutely beautiful. They have so many options to customize. And if you watch the race to Vegas that we did with Out of Spec, I'm going to spoil it for you now. This is the vehicle that won. This is a charging beast. It's super comfortable. I would love to take one for a ride. What about you, Patrick? Oh, yeah. Can we just buy one? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're at the Subaru booth for the Subaru Solterra. I know a lot of our friends back in Colorado are very interested in this vehicle. It may not have the best range or the best charging, but what it does have is a lot of ground clearance. So that's, I believe... It's over eight inches of ground clearance. Yeah, Liv has the stat for that. <laughs> I think it's super cool. And a lot of people think it has a little bit of controversial styling with all of the plastic. But look at the inside. Looks very slick. I love the center screen. Bit of a big center console, but very Subaru. Very super. And very similar to the Toyota BZ4X. If they have one of those, we'll find that later today. And of course, you can't have a Mach-E video without <laughs> some Mach-E. So what's really cool is we actually have two here. This is the ice white package. So you see the white wheels. I'm going to go behind Liv. We have the white pony up front. And then inside, there's a lot of white, 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 white everywhere. Uh, the wheel arches are white as well as, I love that, that's just really slick. But over here, this is new for 2023. This is the Night Pony version. And it's this is a GT Performance Edition, but it has the black wheels and it has a little bit of extra black trim that you can't really see much on the GT Performance Edition. It's really subtle. I almost feel like this, if this is called Night Pony, the other one should be called Snow Pony. Snow Pony. Right? <laughs> yeah. I, I do like the the black wheels, and we have a, of course, Grabber Blue Maki. I think this would be neat to see on a Grabber Blue. It would be, but we've even talked about like doing the inside of these blue. Wouldn't that be awesome? Oh yeah, be cool if they had other packages of these. But of course, this is our our favorite EV out here. <laughs> um, if you're not familiar with the Maki, this one gets about 260 miles of range. I believe this one is up to now 277 if I remember all of my stats. <laughs> this is a basically like a premium 
uh, and you can sort of tell if you didn't know, oh, here's another little white detail. Yeah. So that's white. Sorry for my knees cracking. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, they added some like white features there. I believe on this one, there's it's oh, a little it's bit black. extra black. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, let's go on and find something that's not a Maki since we have a lot of Makis on this channel. <laughs> and of course, this groundbreaking option, the F-150 Lightning, one of my favorite features, we're standing right in front of it, is the Mega Power Frank. This is one of the best Franks on the market, like Pac-Man basically. This is a super sweet deep blue if you can see that. Oh wow, I thought it was black, but yeah, yeah it's really blue. If you it's can, really, yeah, there we go. it's a really deep blue. I think it's gorgeous, although obviously this is in really bright lighting. Um, but it, Patrick knows the stats on it, about 300 miles of range? Just over 300, uh, depending on what package you get. 230 with the standard range battery. Um, there's a lot of different variations on this vehicle. This is a Platinum and of course the famous Mega Power Frunk. And <laughs> they have a bunch of stuff being powered by this vehicle. Uh, of course, you can see some of the power outlets over here and they got the TV running, they got speakers running. Outside, It's there's another lightning powering stuff as well. And if you love the drain in the Maki that is actually also in the Mega Power Frunk, it's just underneath this floor here, is basically a sub frunk that's really large too. And I think it's one of the finalists for the NAC Toy Truck of the Year. That'll be announced in January. I think it has to win. I mean, it's such a revolutionary truck. I know Rivian is, is out there, but this is sort of groundbreaking because Ford is taking the workhorse F-150 and making it electric and available to the you know a lot of workers out there. Um, the, these aren't the, the pro versions, but the pro versions are being used extensively throughout the country already, so very cool. And by the way, this is a Lariat. That was a Platinum. There's also an XLT in the Pro. Okay, Liv had to step away because she is doing some interviews for A Girl's Guide to Cars. We'll link to all of her articles that she's been doing for them down below if you want to check out her actual written articles. But I'm going to keep looking for more EVs. And right now I'm with the Toyota BZ4X. This is just like the Subaru Solterra, but a little bit of difference. Like this, these panels here are like a gloss instead of a, a matte finish. As you can see, there is no frunk on either the BZ4X or the Subaru Solterra, but it looks nearly identical. I think it's slightly lower than the, the Solterra, but has similar range and of course, identical charging. Next up from Toyota as well is this concept. It's a BZ compact SUV concept. I really hope this makes it to market. It looks really sharp and hopefully Toyota does some really cool stuff. By the way, of course they're known for their hybrids, specifically the Prius, and I don't want to cover a bunch of hybrids on this channel just yet. Unless you guys want it, just let us know. But here is the all new 2023 Prius, just announced, I believe yesterday or the day before, but I think it looks really sharp. I wish it were an EV, but it's not. But if you're into hybrids and if you like the Prius, this is pretty sharp. Now onward. And now I'm in an EV and this is a Lexus 2023 RZ coming out in February. And guess what? It has a yoke. This won't be available on the first ones coming from Lexus, but at some point you will be able to get the yoke. Now, a lot of people talk about the yoke that Tesla has started including on their X and S models and they don't like it. From what I understand with the Lexus, there is a difference. And what it is, is that depending on your speed, the yoke basically has a different ratio from turn to turn. So like at high speeds, if you turn it a lot, you're not going to like, you know, flip the car or whatever. But then in the parking lot, you just, you know, you turn it and all of a sudden you'll, you know, make that sharp corner that you need to. So very interesting steer by wire design that they have with the yoke, but let's get out real quick and look at the overall design of it. This is the first fully electric model coming from Lexus. And you can sort of tell instead of the massive grill, they have like a massive painted front area up here that will let you know that it doesn't have airflow going into the motor, of course. 
I believe this is very similar to the BZ4X as well. Uh, you can see some of the styling cues are, of course, lexified, if you will. I like it, but of course, we need to get behind the wheel and actually drive it. And I'm curious to try the yoke. I'm not a fan of the yoke in the Tesla, uh, but I've never driven one. So that's just for me guessing how I would like or dislike something. I need to actually try it out and try it out in this eventually. So by the way, here are some of the stats. She has a 71.4 kilowatt hour battery. 312 horsepower, zero to 60 in 5.2 seconds. And let's see, the range is up to 225 miles. So a bit low on the range, but who knows? Maybe worth it for some people. Let's move on. Back to Toyota's booth. This is an iRoad. Not sure all the specs on these. Here's an LQ. The, this is obviously a concept. And then they have some other personal mobility devices here. I guess they all technically qualify as battery electric vehicles. Maybe this makes up for the fact that the BZ4X isn't exactly top of the line, uh, exciting EV. But if you bought one, hope you love it. <laughs> and now we're here at the Nissan booth and here comes one of their brand new electric vehicles, the Nissan Aria looks great we actually got to ride in one at the new york auto show i thought it looked uh like a step above by far compared to the uh, nissan leaf has uh, a bit better range a bit of course a bit pricier better charging and of course one of the best improvements is that it's not using chatamo anymore since chatamo is basically a dying standard here in the u.s so very cool to see this coming out from Nissan. They have announced it a while ago and great to see that it's gonna be on the road soon here in North America. Okay, here is a bonus. This is a special edi edition Nissan Aria. I believe they took this to SEMA, which just occurred about uh, a couple of weeks ago. But what do you guys think? Do you want some uh, faux wood accents on your EV. I don't know about that, but it is cool. They got a nice rack with a surfboard and I'm not really sure about these wheels. I'm sure that would kill your efficiency because I bet they're heavy, but it looks pretty trippy to see this. And here is the Nissan Leaf. This is such an underrated little EV. This one has up to 212 miles of range. Charging port is up here in the front. It's a Chatamo charger, which is one of the big negatives, if you ask me. And because it's an air-cooled battery, it has trouble charging into heat compared to a lot of the other EVs out there that have like liquid-cooled systems. But for the price and for around town city driving, this is a fantastic option. As you may know, about 90% of your charging for most EV owners is done at home. And for some people, it may be even higher than that. If that's the case, and if you're looking for something lower price, you know, this is a great, great option. And here is the VW ID4. I'm not sure about this gray color, but there's a lot of other fantastic colors available, including this red one right, right here. I like the blue the best. I don't see a blue one out here, <laughs> but it is a fantastic value as well. They are now starting to make these in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I believe that's a, with a smaller battery and a little bit lower range, but would be a great option for many people and maybe even us. Uh, I believe that the, the price has been lowered on that one as well, down to 37,000. I'm not sure if not, I'll, somebody, Liv or me, will pop up the, the correct value right now. And of course, what a lot of people are excited about is the ID Buzz. We did a tour of the inside of this when we were at the New York Auto Show. I think it looks fantastic anytime it's in two-tone colors, the yellow and white here. And let's see, let's walk around here. There's a blue and white one as well. First time I've seen the blue and white combo in person. I think it looks so good. First time I think I've ever wanted a minivan. These are coming to the US eventually. Right now they're on sale in Europe. They're coming off the production line, but they do not have, I think this is a European spec, which means it's actually slightly shorter than the one that's coming to the US. Of course, everything in the US, they have to make a little bit bigger. 
some of the features on this are little details. There's like this diamond pattern that is throughout the, the cabin and on the outside. So there's diamonds here, there's diamonds in the grill and just a really fun, fun looking vehicle. The uh, center console here is actually removable. So like you could take that out for whatever various purposes. Like if you're doing some van camping, you could uh, take that out and then easily get to the back to where your bed would be. <laughs> some people ask, does it have a frunk? It does not have a frunk, of course. It is so small up front. But otherwise, I think it's a exciting vehicle that I know a lot of people are hoping makes it to the US sooner rather than later. I believe that it's gonna make it by the end of 2023 to the US. So hopefully we'll see these on the road. I know Kyle Connor has, is doing a road trip on one of these. So we'll put a link to out of spec. If they have done that road trip or released a video, we'll, we'll link that down in the description. And now we're in the Chevy booth. A lot of people have given them a heat because they you know, did not have EVs at the last LA Auto Show, but here they are big time with some new EV models that are going to be hitting the street soon. And we'll start here. There is a nice Chevy Blazer. This should be coming later this year. And back there is the one that we're actually excited about is the Chevy Equinox. I'm not gonna get over closer to that, I apologize. It looks like they're doing an interview right now. Uh, that one is gonna be in the 30,000 range. And I love the blue and white of that one. And competition for the F-150 Lightning and Rivian is the Chevy Silverado. It has some really cool features. Of course, it has a pretty big front, just like the Lightning. And as you can see, it sort of lifts right above the bumper as, as well. So the Rivian, it basically just like a normal hood. So you got to lift things up and over, but the Lightning and this one, it'd be easy front loading. And I think that'll make it like a lot more usable for most people. Now, another difference maker with the Silverado, I'm going to walk around to the back so you can see this is that the rear of the passenger compartment can be opened up to the tail bed. So like if you need to carry a kayak or long lumber or anything like that, it should be very easy to do. And of course, you can see they have stuff plugged in as well. So of course there's power on board, just like the, there is with the Lightning. And now we're over on the side of the Equinox. You can see it a little bit better. I won't get in too close to the interview with the, the filming, but again, like we are excited by this one because it's going to be a lower cost EV, which is, I won't say replacing, but it's sort of uh, going to be a little bit of a step up for the Chevy Bolt. And they have a couple of bolts here. They have the Bolt EUV, which is this one here, and the Bolt EV. And we are looking at both of these as our second EV great value for the money. They actually lowered the price for the 2023 model. It's still undetermined whether either one of these will qualify for the new federal tax credit. There's everybody's still writing the rules for that. So um, I don't know. Do you think this could be a good second EV for us? Either one of these, or should we consider some, something else like the ID4? I think they're a great value. One of the differences between the EUV and the EV Bolt besides the fact that EV is slightly bigger, is that their Super Cruise is available in the EUV. So that might be a consideration for us because we're gonna be out here in Southern California driving a lot of freeways. So Super Cruise could be very valuable for us. Okay, scratch that. We don't need a Bolt or an ID4. We need a hypercar, right? <laughs> this is the Hyperion. It's a hydrogen electric hypercar. Better than a supercar, right? Anyways, this is just dreaming. If I won that uh, $2 billion lottery, maybe I could get this one, but otherwise we're stuck with a bolt. <laughs> and now I'm at the Volvo booth. They have a couple of cool offerings. One is this Volvo XC40. We did a little bit of a drive review of this one. I thought it was pretty fantastic. It's actually built on like the same platform as the Polestar 2. So if you like that, but want a little bit more room, this is a pretty darn cool option. Let's see what this one is coming in at. It says 61,000. 
it may not be like the best at the range. I believe the range is like 223 miles, but it's Volvo. So there's some, you know, nice European Volvo touches. And if you don't like the square rounded rear of that, they also have a Volvo C40 recharge that is the same platform, but has the nicer looking rear of the vehicle. So which one do you prefer? They are very similar in range. I'm not sure exactly what the range is of the C40. And we have a video coming out on that. Plus Liv has an article in a girl's guide on the C40. So you should definitely check a look, take a look at that and see what you think. And even though we have a Mustang Mach-E, I do like the styling of the EV6. It's a bit of like this like futuristic sleek look. Some people don't like the rear of it. I like it a lot in this color. It's like this like nice gunmetal gray, but it's like a matte finish. Looks really sharp, very comparable to the Mach-E. One or two advantages that it has over the Mach-E are the fast charging. So it'll do like 10 to 80% in about half the time as the Mach-E, as well as the fact that you can uh, buy a little device from Kia that will allow you to like plug in like 120 volt appliances into the charging port and power them. So you, you know, like if you went camping or something like that, or if you lost power, you could literally like maybe power your microwave or something like that just off of the car. Uh, our friends rented one a couple of months ago, took it into the Colorado mountains and had a fantastic time with it. They are a pretty good option if you don't like the Mach-E styling, but we, we love the Mach-E and we're not switching, but this is another cool car. Every year, Dak Toy announces winners of the car of the year, truck of the year, SUV of the year, and that's this area behind me. And what's really cool is the number of EVs that are being represented. So now right here is a Cadillac Lyric that's up for, I'm, I'm guessing, of course, SUV of the year, Genesis GV60, we did a drive of one of these back in Colorado. Very cool. It's another of the ones from the Hyundai Motor Group. And of course, another EV6. And then over here, this is the first one I've seen of these. This is the Genesis G80 EV. Looks super cool. Not sure about this giant grill up front, but a beautiful looking car and very luxurious looking. I don't know if we can see inside that well with the GoPro, but take a little peek there and then of course there are also some EV trucks as we mentioned the Ford F-150 Lightning is one of the finalists and then we'll skip over this this middle one that's just you know gas powered but up front is another of the uh actually what is this this is the yeah Lordstown Endurance and like I said I think it looks really cool up front and the stripes down the side sort of give it a very unique look. Very cool to see these up for all these awards now. Now, you could just say and write it off as this is one of the most inefficient EVs, but it's also one of the coolest EVs. And this is the GMC Hummer. It is a beast. Very fast, very cool. One of the unique features of this one is that it can crab walk, which means the front and rear wheels can turn the same and sort of like go at a diagonal. It also means it can, they can turn in the opposite direction, which means it turns, the, the turn radius is a lot smaller than you would expect for a vehicle of this size. It is very powerful, very fun, and it has WTF mode, which is a quick launch, fast acceleration mode. I don't know. I don't think I'll ever buy one, but it is cool to see it here. And right across, we are going to start entering the Hyundai booth. And their most famous model, I guess you could say right now, is the Hyundai Ionic 5. Very awesome to see how many awards this has won. Of course, this is another competitor to the Mustang Mach-E. And behind me is a Polestar 2. This is a fun, fun car. It is a fantastic performer. It is built basically on the same platform as the XC40 and C40. Not the greatest of range, but it is a fantastic driving vehicle. 
it includes Android Automotive. I think that's an interesting note, at least for me. That's something that's coming to Ford and a lot of their vehicles in the next couple of years because Ford and Google have signed an agreement. I like this car a lot. Of course, it's not an SUV, which is what we were looking for when we bought the Mach-E. This one is a performance edition, and you can tell with the like gold brakes here. And then, I don't know if you can see inside, but it also has uh, gold uh, shoulder uh, seat belts. I almost forgot about this. This is the Kia Nero EV. It's been slightly redesigned for 2023. If you notice the two-tone uh, accent toward the rear, that's something that's new. I think it looks uh, pretty cool to have the two-tone. A lot of people don't like that, but it gives it a little bit of uh, interest. Now, the Kia Nero is available as a gas and hybrid version, but the electric version is a pretty decent offering. It's front wheel drive only, no front, that type of thing. But it is actually a decent bargain. I believe this one is about 46,000. Although at that price, then you could sort of like get into some other EVs that are about the same price. So I don't know, it's, it's not a bad offering. It gets about 253 miles of range, but looks pretty neat. And if you are the type of person that wants like a normal car that just happens to be an EV, this could be it. Another one I almost missed and is often overlooked is the Hyundai Kona, which is similar to the Kia Nero. It is based on a car that you can get as a hybrid or gas. It is front wheel drive only, no front. But again, if you're looking for an EV that's not, you know, very EV feeling on the inside, this would be one for you. And just like that, Liv is back. Where were you? I was at Hyundai. I was covering the Ionic 6 and they had the Envision 74 concept. Super cool stuff. Of course, also by the Hyundai Motor Company, we have the Genesis stuff. I know you cover Genesis, but behind us, we have a bunch of concepts. Concepts are super cool because you don't know if they're gonna be anything, but they might have these really cool concepts that could find their way into a real vehicle. So they might be like really outlandish and have potential for the future. Yeah, I, a lot of times I'm not super excited by concepts because it's on the opposite side is like, it may never make it to production and it's just sort of like a bunch of talk, but they have some really cool concepts. So let's go take a look. Yeah. So I love this. This is like the X concept convertible. Uh, it's being, it's pulling out the video here. So we'll have to insert some B-roll over it, but this looks super slick. Don't know how much of this will actually make it into production. And then we'll move down here. We'll get some other videos. It's really crowded. I think everybody loves these. So we're gonna actually step up here. And I think this is just like a sedan version of the X concept because it's so Look has. at that interior, if you can see that. It's really classy and kind of old school. I really love that merging of the new and the old. Yeah, of it looks course. really good. Let's check out the convertible here since we can peek right in. Wow, oh, look yeah. at the copper. Wow, this that looks is really amazing. Awesome. Again, it's a concept, but it's an amazing looking concept. Yeah, I love their use of lighting. It's really unconventional, dragging everything into the side of the vehicle, both on the front and the back. And it's not it really flashing looks... like that in real life. <laughs> oh, can you see it flashing? No, not yeah. at all. No, it looks amazing. It really adds to the whole streamlined effect. And I believe there's some other concepts and we haven't really, or I, I didn't get to hear the press conference, <laughs> but I think this one is also an electric concept over here. Yeah, that's definitely a concept. But again, we don't want to spend too much time on the concepts, but uh, of course Genesis has the GV60 and this is an electrified GV70. So electrified GV70. We saw one of these in uh, North Las Vegas charging. Of course, then it was uh, under wraps. Yeah. So it was camouflaged. If you guys saw that video, there were a couple people that called it out and recognized it. So well done. Here it is in the metal. <laughs> and then there's the GV60. I absolutely love the GV60. Obviously, this is on the same platform as the Kia EV6 and the Onyx 5. So it, you have this variety that depends on what your aesthetic is. To me, this is my aesthetic. It has a globe on the inside, like the gear shifter and everything. I love it. What's your favorite, Patrick? I think I like the look of the EV6 the best. 
And this is the electrified G80 that we saw on the other side. So I won't spend any time on this one. Uh, the other one was black. I like the color of this one. And we can look inside. So I, I'm, we'll get a little peek of the inside of this one. Genesis is a really cool up and coming brand, I think, that uh, is a little bit more luxurious than the Hyundai or Kia. Oh, and there's their charge port. I didn't know it was on the front. Ooh. And it's very well hidden with that, that grill. Where was that? What? What even? That's cool. I don't that like really charge cool. ports all the way in the front, but that's actually very slick looking. Seamless. That was really cool. I'm so glad that guy did that and we'd have no idea that was there. I know. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Onward. Yeah. Hyundai also talked about the Ionic 6 today, and I'll let you talk about this one a little bit because you got to see the press conference. I did. I was floored. I'm so excited to see this in person. Look at this. It's actually got kind of an opalescent finish. I didn't even realize. I think that this is a divisive look. Uh, the Ionic 5 is divisive too. Some people love it, some people hate it. I love this. You guys will have to let us know what you think about this. It's I mostly because of the rear. This. Let's take a look at the rear. Yeah, the controversial rear. What do you guys think? The dual spoiler rem reminds me of the Mercur XR4Ti from back in the 80s. Most people don't remember that. I'm giving away my age, but I think it looks pretty cool. In photos, it looks a little odd, and probably on camera, especially on the GoPro, it looks a little odd, but in person, it looks pretty neat. I love it. I really love it. And it's all very consistent with the Ionic brand, their pixel theme everywhere, as you'll see here. You'll see this in this first rear spoiler here. You'll see it inside the vehicle on the steering wheel. This one is all about streamlined. Of course, the Ionic 5 is as well, but like these door handles tuck in. So this whole thing is just swoop, streamlined, speedy and efficient. I think it actually has a drag coefficient of 0.22. Wow, that's yeah. pretty low. I mean, I'll, I'll check if I'm right with that, but um, I think it looks fantastic either way. I love this one over the Ionic 5, personally, so. Well, and this is supposedly like a Tesla Model 3 size and competitor. I, I can see why a lot of people might go for something like this over the Model 3. This is like very like bold design versus the Model 3, which is not. It's super bold. And look at the pixels here as well. So obviously oh, yeah. this illuminates. And I don't know if you can see this paint job, but it's actually kind of astounding. It sort of matches my nails a little bit. I think I should get this car. What do yeah. you think? It's really hard to, to show on a GoPro, but maybe right here. <laughs> It looks really awesome. And we're wow, and they even feedback. have the pixel design cues on the seats over there, as you can see. Oh yeah. Very consistent. I love it. And looks like a lot of room front and back. I don't know, looks like it's gonna be a winner. Yeah. Remember last year when we were just brand new to the LA Auto Show and we came and saw this launch of this brand new brand, Venfoss? Here they are with four vehicles. Is a four or is a five? There's four here. There's four. They do have five vehicles out. They're obviously not a brand new company. They are a, a huge company in many different industries, but newer to the automotive. And here they bring all their offerings. We have the VF8 that we're focusing on right here. That's this blue one here. Actually, and, the blue looks really good, doesn't and, it? And we got to ride in a VF8. We Was did. it VF8? Yeah, VF8 yeah. at the New York Auto Show. We got to test out some of its automated voice systems. And this, this is the VF7, and this is brand new here at the LA, LA Auto Show. Looks pretty sharp, and it's a little bit smaller than the VF8. We don't have all the specs in front of us. They're going to announce more of the specs later today. Now, one of the things that you'll notice here is this design element that is also on the VF9, or similar to the VF9. And I like the rear of this. It looks pretty cool with the these side lights here. I like oh, that. Yeah. Um, and the very consistent line here that you'll see on all of their vehicles highlighting the V, the Venfast. But we'll put the info, the specs a little bit, you know, down below or in the description or just below us as we're walking around. And we did around. a very thorough video of this last year, so we'll link to that. And hopefully we're gonna get a, a closer look at these later. This I am so excited about. So if you can tell, 
the numbers, uh, the size of the vehicles decrease with the numbers. So this is a VF6. I haven't seen this in person yet. We obviously saw this unveiled at CES last year. I'm so psyched about this one. And obviously I really like the color. Sorry. Yeah, it doesn't have a, like the, the fancy tail lights like the BF7 So we have does, the, the VinFast swoop. The sort of signature VinFast tail light. Yeah. Um, but it looks really cool. Like, I, I'm not sure about this color. This is, this I is like my the color. color. And it's a much more petite vehicle, which I'm really excited about. Oh. You still have a nice big screen. Let's take a peek You still inside. have a glass roof. It looks really good. And look at the copper. Actually, yeah, like warm copper on the inside. Now, one thing that's unique about VinFast is they're doing some stuff that I'm not sure how well it'll work, but they're talking about like you buy the car and lease the battery, or you can just outright buy the car. Uh, there, there's a lot of details on it. I'm just not sure how popular that will be. And we did cover a lot of the details in our other video. There are two battery leasing options. So there's one if you drive a lot and one if you drive uh, less. So there's that, but it's definitely unusual and uh, we'll link our video if you want to look into that more. But we'll have to see how everyone And they are it. building a plant in North Carolina, which is cool for me because I have a lot of friends that live in North Carolina. I grew up in North Carolina. And then this is sort of the, the thing I was talking about that's over there on the VF7, how it swoops to a little point on both of these models. And this is the VF9, so it's the biggest of the VinFast offerings. Yes and quite expansive in here. This is Something three that row, I think if you can see that. Yeah. And I just noticed this and I think this is really interesting. We've seen a lot of trucks come to the market lately, some of which are missing a running board and a hand grabby. Oh, this yeah. vehicle is close to the ground, but there is still a running board and a hand grab. So this is definitely made for accessibility for families you're getting in maybe your elderly family or your children and they need to grab something in an easier way to get in i think this is a really well considered feature that i wasn't expecting and one of the things i'm just noticing now is like the hood here has like an air vent that goes through so continues on down here so it's a way to direct a lot of the wind on the front face of this vehicle that goes up and over which is pretty interesting considering that it has a okay size front. Oh, and I like, there's quick access to your battery here, so. Super cool. Some neat little features. Uh, like I said, they're building a plant in uh, North Carolina. We saw that they have a storefront down in San Diego. So VinFast is definitely, definitely like pushing hard to get these vehicles into production and to consumers pretty soon. So this looks like a Mustang, but it's not. This is from Charge Cars. It's called the 67. It looks like a 67 Mustang quad motor, over 500 horsepower, I believe. I forget the exact specs because the one spec that I like turns me off the most about this car is it's $450,000. Very, very cool. They're only going to make 499 of them, but 450,000 is out of my price range. I don't know about you, but if you love the Mustang look and you want a real Mustang. This is sort of closer to the Mach-E, I guess. We've seen a lot of EVs that are inspired by the Southern California landscape, and one of them is kind of unconventional. That is Indie EV. They're unconventional because they actually incorporate gaming and computer systems within their vehicle. So this is all about creating. Uh, we will link a video up in the eye where Patrick actually killed zombies in this. They also have like a whole feature where you can record yourself inside the car and the car has a computer system of its With own. With a VR headset and gun, so it was yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> Not real zombies. Not real zombies, of course. Because, you know, we got to like clarify that, right? <laughs> Necessary distinction. But it's definitely like the gamer mentality in the indie. Uh, um, and you can see the colors to the left here. They have a huge variety and they're all obviously super Southern California based. Laguna, Melrose, Golden State, all that. But like a really interesting array of colors that you wouldn't necessarily find in every vehicle manufacturer. And we'll get over here. We, we could crawl into the other one. We're gonna just take a peek into this one and show you the computer that's inside. So you can see like there's a couple of screens. It's basically running Windows so you can run like Windows software in here, but it also has like multiple cameras in the front and the rear, like facing in the interior of the cabin. So like you could do a 
ultimate carpool karaoke, which is <laughs> what Liv wants to do, right? I would totally do it. By the way, what is your carpool karaoke song? You should stick it down below. Mine is something by Jamiroquai, probably. So let us know what yours is. What's yours, Patrick? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Probably <laughs> Alan Jackson that, you know, go back to my old roots. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can see the oh, yeah. zombies or anything. And you can sort of see the, the screen layout over here. Uh, totally, totally running windows over there on the right. It's updating Steam <laughs> the right mouse now. and everything. Uh, you could, yeah. So the idea is like, it's really is like a full blown computer in the indie so not only can you run the games that you would normally run but you can also do like some of your social media uh, video streaming like i can see some of the icons over there google chrome uh what else is there some vr stuff vlc media player and like i said it's updating steam right now so pretty interesting concept uh and i, I am trying to remember um i think it's like mid 60s but i know that the ultimate computer system does not come with the base model so it's more expensive i'm trying to remember what it's called it's like a vim or something I'm do you remember sure. but oh yeah forget, check out our other video yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll link to that as well but here's the colors represented in models and the only color missing from this is melrose which is a purple which i really like this is a cool and loud EV, which is sort of out of the ordinary, but it's the Dodge Charger Daytona SRT concept. I had to look because I can't remember <laughs> all of those. But if you haven't heard this one, uh, there are some other videos out there that shows that they built in a system where it can rev its engine to basically sound like a typical muscle car. Sort of cool. I'd probably turn it off immediately, but anyways, uh, it is a concept. Hopefully this will make it to market almost identical to what you're seeing here. One of the cool things is, is like, look at all the cool colors they have. Purple, blue, what is that? A avocado green, <clears throat> black. It's my favorite. That's your favorite? It's my favorite. Lime green. Isn't and then we have a yellow, green, orange, sort of grayish. And then this one down here, I believe it's like a deep, deep, oh, deep yeah. purple. Can you see that? I don't know if you can. We'll try to get some uh, footage of that for you. But I think it's going to be awesome. Fiat has the 500E. This is a special edition. Which one is this? This is a Giorgio Armani 500E. I don't even know how much it costs, but it's yeah. one of a kind, right? Yeah, it's sort of weird. I wanted to see just a plain 500E, but they have a bunch of uh, 500s. They are all like special editions. But here you go if you want to see an electric uh, Fiat 500. This one, of course, is Giorgio Armani. You can see the GA in the wheels, the signature license plate. It says Giorgio Armani. You probably can't see that in the GoPro. <laughs> but uh, very, very cute little car. And I want to see a regular 500E if I can. I do too. And we just have to point it out since we're here. This is obviously not the electric version, but there's the Bulgari one. And they actually used gold flex from their jewelry and added it to the paint. So like reuse gold flex from the jewelry. If you could see me, you'd see the eye roll. <laughs> He's rolling his <laughs> eyes. I think it's a fun, it's a fun twist, but yeah. I would love to see a real Fiat 500E. All just right. Plain. Are there any more EVs? <laughs> Let's look. Okay, we're running out of time. So I'm gonna run through and try to get some of these last ones, but this is a rebooted buggy. I believe it's a bit pricey, but Pretty cool electric buggy coming soon. Th this one, of course, is a prototype and some of their other concepts here. But anyways, we got to run. We're running out of time. It's only one day this year, so I know I'm going to miss some EVs. We're going to end this tour of all the EVs at the auto show right here in front of this test track. If you come out here, you can do test drives right inside here which is part of the beauty of EVs. It's dead silent behind us, really. You can still hear that hum. Oh, that sweet EV hum. But isn't that cool that you can have this inside? There's no fumes, there's no loud sounds. Sometimes if there's a Mach-E, there's squealing, but we haven't even yeah. heard squealing this time. I don't know if they're launching the Mach-E this time. They're not I didn't launching. See. I think they've stopped doing the Mach-E ride-alongs maybe, but they did have the lightning out there and that didn't squeal. But anyways, uh, I think that's all the EVs that we could find this time. I know I probably missed some. I missed some last year. I missed some in New York. But anyways, it, I, 
<laughs> oh, they're going around. They're doing multiple trips. Yay. I thought it was one lap. Wait. If you come out to the LA Auto Show or if there's an EV that you were looking forward to and you missed it, please leave it down below. We'll be sure to give it lots and lots of love. I think this is an amazing problem to have that now EVs are becoming so prolific, so all over yeah. that it's hard to capture all of them, especially in one day. If you do make it out to the LA Auto Show, you will have to leave your thoughts down below on what your favorite thing was or what your favorite thing of this video was. Yeah. And if anybody counted, I might count before we publish this. No, you count. How well, many? You count. <laughs> you guys count. <laughs> well, you count and then I'll tell you if you're wrong. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah. So uh, what was your favorite EV of the bunch? Which one would you actually consider buying? Because I, I know six. like for me, the Porsche Taycan was still oh, my yeah, favorite, yeah. but I don't know if I can like justify buying one. Uh, of course, I like the Mach-E GT, of course. So anyways, we've been rambling. I know this video ended up getting long because there's so many EVs. So thanks to our patrons that like make this type of stuff possible. We don't get paid by anybody to come do these. The only like reimbursement we get is we get some of the, the revenue from YouTube for having Google videos or whatever, Google ads. Which but, we then put into coming to things like this because it is pricey, but we truly appreciate the opportunity to be able to do this. So like Patrick said, huge thank you to our patrons for helping make this possible. Huge thank you to you for watching, liking, subscribing, and sharing and commenting and all that stuff because that engagement helps us keep going and doing this stuff. Anyways, we're babbling. Thank you so, so much for hanging out with us. And just remember that whatever you drive, whether it is a sweet new vehicle that's at an auto show or an old beater, whatever, enjoy the ride. Bye. Bye.